Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to take a look at four theories on the origins of life. We've been talking about in this process of evolution that organisms can arise from other similar organisms of the same type. However, natural selection may lead to an increase in the number of species. If many species, though, evolve from just a few and we continue working our way back in time, ultimately, all of today's species can then trace their origins back to just one ancestral species. And so we might have a cladogram that looks something like this. That includes the three major domains of all living things today. And that one ancestral species we call LUCA, or the last universal common ancestor. Question is, how did that first species come around? Well, that's what we're going to take a look at today. There are four theories on the origins of life, on how life may have started on Earth. The first is called spontaneous generation. Now, this is simply saying that life formed from non-living materials. Now, back in the day, people were making observations like, oh, there's a dead animal on the ground. And I come back a day later, and now there's a bunch of maggots on that dead animal. Hmm, maybe that's where maggots came from. Or, we don't have this too much around here, but in other parts of the world, there are creek beds, and they could be dry for parts of the year. And then when the rains come, it fills up with water, and they find fish in those creeks. Well, when the ancient Greeks were then finding fossils of fish, they thought, hmm, maybe fish came from the rocks. Now, we know that's nonsense. That's not true. But we had to scientifically disprove this theory. And that's what Louis Pasteur did. Maybe the name sounds familiar. Uh, he came up with the pasteurization process that we use for milk today, for instance. And so to show this, he took some nutrient broth and he heated it to kill any microorganisms that were in there. And you can see how he has, he's got this really long curved neck on the flask. And he let that sit for a period of time. Now he did this a second time, but this time he cut the neck off. What happened over time was that bacteria started to fill up in the broth. In the top example, there was no bacteria that were present because they had no way of getting in. You know, bacteria isn't just forming out of nothing. These bacterial spores obviously came from the air, and when it hit the nutrient broth, they started to grow. But if they can't get to the nutrient broth, there's no growth, and so Pasteur disprove this process of spontaneous generation. And even though it was disproven, I just wanted to give you a little bit of background on this because it was a commonly held belief for centuries. The next theory is creation. Creation simply says that life was created by God, that all life on the planet is here because God in a seven day actually six day time period, put all life here on the planet. Now recall that this does fall outside of the realm of science. We have no scientific way of testing it to be able to prove it or not prove it. But just because we can't scientifically prove or disprove this, it doesn't mean that it could not have happened. And so we'll include this on our theories on how life may have originated. The third theory is called the Cosmozoic Theory, and this states that life originated in matter from space. What does this really mean? Well, let's, first of all, let's talk about what does it not mean. Right? It doesn't mean that some aliens came from another planet and, ooh, and, and seeded life here on the Earth, and you know, maybe Earth is the penal colony from some other planet. That's not what we're talking about here. No, what we're talking about is that when NASA recently sent up some probes to comets, and what they discovered was that there are compounds present on those comets that can make things like RNA. And so there was a paper published in 2015 that looked at this idea of the basic building blocks of life could have come from comets. And then when the comets hit the Earth, it allowed for organic compounds to form, which then, of course, could have allowed for life to have formed. But what we're going to be focusing our time on in this unit is this last theory, chemical evolution, because it is in the realm of science, and it is something that we can test. Chemical evolution simply states that life originated from molecules that were present on the early Earth. Using this premise, scientists have been taking a look at, well, what was the early Earth like? And trying to recreate those in the lab. And is it possible 
for life to form given those conditions. So let's take a look at what the early Earth was like. We're talking about a long time ago. We're talking about the Earth as it was soon after it was formed. Now, the age of the Earth is estimated to be at 4.6 billion years old. That's a long time when you think about that, 4.6 billion years. So just to give you an example of this, uh, here is the timeline of the Earth from uh, the beginning at about 4.6 billion years ago all the way up to the zero which would be today. Now we live in what's called the Cenozoic Era. The dividing line between the Cenozoic and the Mesozoic Era is when the dinosaurs went extinct. Now that was 65 million years ago. So on this timeline of the Earth where it turns to green that took 65 million years. Uh, when we talk about things like Pangaea, well, Pangaea started forming at the beginning of the Mesozoic era. Not breaking apart, but somewhere forming in that time period. So again, think about that. A million years, that's a long time. Imagine 4,600 million year cycles. The Earth is very, very old. When we think about what the Earth was like back then, go way back to what's called the Hadean period of the Earth. Now, as the name implies, Hadean, it comes from the word Hades, which means kind of hell-like. The Earth was very different back then. You know, when we think of the Earth, this is what we think of. A nice, cool planet. It's got lots of water on it and clouds and some land. But the Earth was very different four and a half billion years ago. They didn't have liquid water on there. It looked kind of like this. It was a new planet. It was very hot. So there's a difference between the Hadean Earth and the Earth that we know today. So we're going to make a, a drawing as we're going to do this. And uh, you can take a look at my wonderful artistic skills here as we discuss what the early Earth was like. But we have to remember that when the Earth was forming, it was very hot. So there's a lot of energy that was in the Earth. And it was constantly being bombarded with meteors and comets. In the models of how solar systems formed, that was just a very common thing. But because it's so hot, what we don't see is any liquid water. It's simply too hot for water to exist in its liquid state. Now there was of course lots of volcanoes that were on the planet and, and this, the, these volcanoes would be constantly erupting. So here's an artist's rendition of what the earth might have looked like back then. Of course I think my volcano looks much better than that one. But these volcanoes were erupting and what kind of things were they uh, spewing out? Well basically scientists would say that volcanoes are erupting the same types of gases that come out of volcanoes today. So things like carbon dioxide, CO2, or ammonia, NH3, or methane gas, CH4, or nitrogen gas, N2. Certainly there was some water vapor that was present. Again, it's too hot for water to be in a liquid state. It was in a gaseous state. So this may have been what the early atmosphere was like, but notice something is missing here. Yeah, there's no free oxygen. There's no O2 that an organism would be able to breathe. Of course, there's no living things on the planet right now. now. Of course, over time, the Earth began to cool, and it cooled fairly rapidly. Now, there's something called Newton's Law of Cooling, that if we were to graph the temperature of an object over time, the cooling rate would look something like this, where in maybe in the first half a billion years or so, it's going to cool off pretty quickly. And as it began to cool, well, the water vapor started to condense into clouds. And it started to rain. Now with all of this water vapor that's now forming into liquid water, we start to have our first oceans appearing. Now here's the thing about these first oceans, however. Uh, they were fresh water. So there wasn't time yet for erosion to take place to get all the salt in there. And they were very, very hot. We're talking about boiling water. So the water was close to 100 degrees Celsius, but it was still cool enough for there to be liquid water. Certainly not like the oceans of today. Here's an artist's rendition of what the cooling earth may have looked like. So now the conditions are getting better for life to have formed. So as organic molecules are being made in these early oceans, 
and eventually life started forming, scientists call that the primordial soup. And from this primordial soup, life originated. So how did life start in this primordial soup? Well, that's what we're going to talk about in our next video. And I can't wait to tell you all about it.